In this lesson, we are going to talk about simplifying rational expression, which is a continuation of what we did in the previous lesson. So we are going to start with the example. The first example is to simplify 4x squared over 3x times 12x cubed over 2x and restrict any restriction on the, on the variable or variables. Now, as you can see, x is in the denominator, and we know that the denominator cannot be equal to 0, so we say right at the beginning, x cannot be equal to 0. Now, safely, I can cross out this x and 1 from the numerator, and this x and 1 from the numerator, so this becomes 2. Now 12 divided by 2 gives me 6, and there is nothing, oh, there is also a 3 here and a 6 here, so it can be simplified as 2. So the answer is going to be 2 times 4, which is 8, and then I have an x here, an x squared here, so it's going to be x cubed and x cannot be equal to 0. In the next example, we have to simplify 10ab squared over 4a divided by 15a squared over 12b squared. Just by looking, you can see that the denominators they can't be 0, so we can easily say that a cannot be 0, b cannot be 0. Now, this, when you're dividing fraction, you're going to flip the denominator and then you multiply. So this becomes 10ab squared over 4a times 12b squared over 15a squared. And still the restriction is a and b cannot be equal to 0. Now you're going to multiply 12 times 10 is 120 a b exponent 4 divided by 4 times 15 is 60 a cubed now if we simplify it 120 over 60 is 2 a is going to simplify with this one this is going to be a squared so we're going to end up with b exponent 4 divided by yes <coughs> a squared and a and b cannot be 0 in the next example, we have to simplify and state any restrictions on a squared plus 2a over 3a and 20a squared over 5a squared plus 10a. First, the restrictions is that the denominator it can be 0, so here a cannot be 0, that's the first restriction. And also, this one can't be 0. So we are going to make it equal to 0 to see what are the roots here. So I'm going to say 5a squared plus 10a is equal to 0. I factor 5a. I'm going to get a plus 2 is equal to 0. So here I get either a equal to 0 because of this one or a is equal to negative 2. So the restrictions here are a equal to 0, not equal to 0, and also not equal to negative 2. Now I can safely go ahead and simplify. a squared plus 2a can be written as a times a plus 2, if you factor a out, divided by 3a times 20a squared over 5a squared plus 10a can be written as 5a times a plus 2 and a cannot be equal to 0 or negative 2. Now, looking at this one, I can safely cancel a plus 2 because a cannot be negative 2. And these two, a multiply, they give you a squared which goes with this guy. 20 over 5 gives me 4. So the answer is 4a over 3 and a cannot be 0 or negative 2. 
In the next example, we have to simplify and specify the restrictions on 2x squared minus 8x over x squared minus 3x minus 10 divided by 4x squared divided by x squared minus 9x plus 2. First of all, we have to see what are the roots that makes the denominators equal to 0. So before I do that, I'm going to factor everything out. In the numerator, I'm going to factor 2x out, so I'm going to get 2x times x minus 4 divided by the denominator, the leading coefficient is 1, so I can use sum and product. I'm going to look for two numbers that the product is negative 10 and the sum is negative 3. Those two numbers are negative 5 and 2. So I can write this one as x minus 5, x plus 2, divided by the numerator, just 4x squared, over. Again, two numbers, the product is 10, and the sum is negative 9, so those are negative 4 and negative 5. Now, before I do any simplification I can see that when x is 5 4 negative 2 the denominators are 0 so I can say that x cannot be equal to 5 negative 2 and 4 these are my three restrictions at the moment now I can just flip the second fraction and then multiply so I can write 2x x minus 4 divided by x minus 5 x plus 2 times x minus 4 times x minus 5 divided by 4x squared now I can simplify safely x minus 5 now this x can simplify with this square here then 2 and 4 I get 2 so the answer is x minus 4 times x minus 4 is x minus 4 squared divided by there is a 2 here and there is an x here so it's 2x times x plus 2 but don't forget our restrictions so we are going to rewrite the restrictions that x cannot be 5, negative 2, and 4. One thing I forgot is that when you flip the fractions, x goes at the bottom here, so you have to add another restriction. x cannot be 0, so we have to add a 0 here too. That's, this tells you that at every step of simplification, you have to check your restrictions. If there is new restrictions added, like here, then you have to add it to your uh, previous restrictions. The next example, we have to add 1 over 5x plus 1 over 2x, simplify it, and state any restrictions. Before we do anything, we can see that x is in the denominator, so we say the restriction is x cannot be 0. Now we are going to make sure the denominators are the same. We are going to make the denominators 10x, so they have the same denominator. So I multiply this by 2, and then this by 2, this one by 5, and this one by 5. So I get 2 over 10x plus 5 over 10x, x not equal to 0. Because the denominators are the same, I can add the numerator, so I get 7 over 10x, and x cannot be equal to 0. The next example, we have to simplify and state the restriction of ab squared plus 2 over 2ab squared minus b plus 2 over 2b. Again, as usual, the first, before we simplify anything, we know that a cannot be 0 because of denominator and also b cannot be 0 and also here so we say the first restriction is that a cannot be 0 
B cannot be 0. Now I'm going to make sure the denominators are the same. To make the denominator of this to be the same as that one, I'm going to multiply the numerator by 2AB and the denominator by AB because I already have the two. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by AB and the denominator by AB. So I get a square, AB squared plus 2 over 2AB squared minus AB times B. If I distributed it, I'm going to get AB times B is AB squared. And 2 times AB gives me plus 2AB. I'm uh, distributing this one inside the bracket here. And also 2B times AB gives me 2AB squared. Now the denominators are the same. And remember the restriction is A of B cannot be equal to 0. So I'm going to take 2AB squared, the common denominator, and then subtract the numerator. I get AB squared plus 2 minus AB squared minus 2AB. A and B cannot be 0. AB squared is going to cancel, and then I have 2 minus 2AB. I can factor 2 out. I get 2 times 1 minus AB over 2AB squared. Again, A and B cannot be 0. I simplify 2. I get from here that 1 minus AB over AB squared, and A and B cannot be 0. In this example, we have x plus 5 over x minus 3 plus x minus 7 over x plus 2. As usual, before we do anything, we're going to find the zeros of the denominators. The zeros are at 3 and negative 2. So we can say that x cannot be equal to 3 and negative 2. Now we are going to multiply the first fraction, x plus 5 over x minus 3 by x plus 2 because we want to make the same denominators and the second fraction we are going to multiply it by x minus 3 now they're going to have the same denominator so we can add the numerators so I'm going to write x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now I'm going to expand the numerators. The first one, x time, I mean this one. I'm going to get x squared plus 2x plus 5x plus 10 plus, now we go for this one, x squared minus 3x minus 7x and plus 21. Now x squared plus x squared is going to give me 2x squared. 2x plus 5x is 7x. Minus 7x is 0, so you get negative 3x. 10 plus 21 is 31. Over the denominator, we're going to leave it as factored form. And we are going to write the restrictions again, 3 and negative 2. The next example, we have to simplify x plus 9 over x squared plus 2x minus 48 minus x minus 9 over x squared minus x minus 30. So, I'm going to write the denominators of, as factored form. So, this becomes x plus 9 over... Now, the denominator is quadratic, leading coefficient is 1, so I can use sum and product. I'm looking for two numbers, product is negative 48, the sum is 2, so those two numbers are 8 and negative 6, so this becomes plus 8 and negative 6. Now, the second fraction, I'm going to write 
again leading coefficient is 1 is quadratic so two numbers the product is negative 30 and they add up to negative 1 those are negative 6 and 5 so this is x minus 6 x plus 5 now if you look at the denominators <coughs> x cannot be equal to negative 8 6 and negative 5 these are the restrictions at the moment now to make the denominators the same if you look at the denominators this one has x plus 8 which did the second fraction doesn't have it the second fraction has x plus 5 that the first one doesn't have it so the first one I'm going to multiply by x plus 5 so I get x plus 9 times x plus 5 divided by x plus 8 times x minus 6 times x plus 5 minus the second fraction I'm going to multiply by x plus 8 Now the denominators are the same, so I can add the numerators. And remember, the restrictions are negative 8, 6, and negative 5. So the fraction becomes x plus 8, x minus 6, x plus 5. And I'm going to distribute the numerator. I start with the first numerator x times x gives me x squared x times 5 is 5x 9 times x gives me 9x 9 times 5 gives me 45 now the second one remember that there is a negative here so x times x is x squared this one times negative so it's negative x squared now x times 8 is 8x times negative is negative 8x negative 9 times x is negative 9x times negative is plus 9x and negative 9 times 8 is negative 72 times negative is plus 72 and the same restriction now if you simplify the numerator we are going to get x squared cancels with negative x squared 5 x plus 9x is 14x plus 9x is 23x minus 8x is 15x and 45 plus 72 is 117 and the denominator is x plus 8 x minus 6 times x plus 5 and the restrictions are x cannot be equal to negative 8, 6, and negative 5. In the next example, Raj and Mac, they are competing in a relay team, which is 50 kilometers racing, cycling race. Two parts of the race, one is leg A, which is 30 kilometers, and leg B is 20 if we assume that the speed average speed is different for each cyclist we are supposed to find the simplified expression for total time of the race let's assume that the total time of the race is t this is composed of the time for leg a plus the time for leg b but remember by definition distance is equal to speed times time so from here I can see that time is distance over speed so for leg a ta is really the distance of part a divided by the speed of part a plus the distance of part b divided by speed of part b 
Now the distance in part A is 30, so it's 30 over V sub A plus 20 over V sub B. Now if I multiply this by V sub B, this one by V B, this one by v, v A, this one with V A to have the common denominator, I get the common denominator V A V B and I get 30 V B plus 20 V sub A. Now if I want to specify the restriction, remember this is a fraction so the denominator can be 0 so V sub A and V sub B cannot be 0 which is in real life they can't be 0 because the bicycles are in motion. In the next part of the problem it says that if Raj can maintain an average speed of 35 and Mac 25 determine the minimum time it will take to compete the race. It is obvious that to get the minimum time the fastest person has to ride on the longest leg. That makes sense. Now if we refer to the part A we remember that part uh, leg A was 30 kilometers leg B was 20 kilometers so this means if I want the fastest person on uh, the longest leg V sub A which is the speed of leg A has to be 35 and V sub B has to be 35 subbing it back in the equation I get 30 times this is 25 30 times V sub B is 25 plus 20 times 35 divided by 35 times 25 if you use your calculator this becomes 1.66 hours. Now if you have problem understanding this uh, idea that uh, why we are assigning V sub A 35, V sub B 25, reverse it meaning this time assign V B to be 35, V A to be 25 and evaluate T you will see that it's going to be more than 1.66 hours. And remember that the problem wants minimum time.